So let's talk about Cisco DNA Center Policy and Assurance. With policy, we can create policies that are going to reflect our organization's business intent. Now, this allows us to actually have the DNA Center take in information we provide it. And we're going to have this policy that's going to be translated into network-specific and even device-specific configurations. Now, besides policy, we're going to hop into assurance as well. And with assurance, we can increase the visibility of our network status down to even user devices. Also, this can help us save time by looking through false positives and even having a reduced workload by having Cisco DNA Center proactively find solutions for us regarding our network issues. So let's jump in. In policy, we can take a look at the different policies that have been deployed at this time and check it out. We got bring your own device, development servers, even HR. With a bring your, that sounds scary. HR, bring your own device. But um, you can see the different policies that have been created, and these are the policies that are then going to be deployed and provisioned across multiple devices. We can see the sources based off of, the, all right, who's going to be the source of the network traffic, destination, the BYOD, and then, of course, the contract of what's being allowed, which is permit. For us, though, we can compare some items such as IP-based access control, which takes you back to your IPv4 access control list days. When I click things like add policy, check it out. Source, you know, similar to IPv4. Contract, what you're allowed. No, cool. Destination, and where you're going. And then direction. We're talking bi-directional or one way. Very similar to the access control list we've done in our CLI work. Now, with things like assurance, we can focus here on the health of your network, but also on the troubleshooting. For example, if I scroll down, top 10 issues, priority one can make or break you. This is causing downtime for many users or even many sites. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this first issue that's listed here. And look at that. I get my different instances of this issue that has occurred. I'll go ahead and click on the first one regarding lost connectivity to the identity services engine. And if I scroll down here, hey, suggested actions. Verify whether the identity service engine server is up. Cool, I did that. Next one, verify the route to the identity service engine. Hey, there's a run button. Cisco DNA, can you help me? And it says, well, yes, I can. So I'll go ahead and click on run and check it out. It's going to do the show IP route command for that specific entry, and it's going to see if it's successful in finding that route. We have a success. It exists. We check our Cisco Express forwarding for that specific route. Success. It exists. Continue onwards. Let's verify our interior gateway protocol adjacencies. Let's go for it. Click run. It checks ISIS. Exists. OSPF. Good to go. EIGRP. We're friendly. And if you still can't fix it after all this, you know what? Just contact Cisco Tech. They'll take care of you. This is the power of having this view, this intent-based networking deployment.